Kent. I'm a professor of computer information technology at San Jacinto College. Today I want to run through creating a Windows 7 virtual machine using VMware Workstation 12. It's the player version which is the free version but let's jump right in and create our new virtual machine. I'm going to click create. Now the first thing I have to do when I create this machine is tell it where my Windows 7 disk is that's going to be used to install the operating system. And if I hit browse right now, you'll see it's pointing at desktop ITSC 1305 and I've got the DVD image file. It's an ISO, which is a compressed image of an entire disk in that folder already. I downloaded it from Microsoft Imagine, which is the service we have that allows our students to download Microsoft products for educational purposes. And now I'll hit open. I picked my DVD disk and I'm going to hit next. I don't need to enter a license key right now. I'm going to hit next. It says, are you sure? I'm going to say continue. I'm going to hit yes. And now I'm going to give my virtual machine a name and let's just call it Windows 7 x64 that's a good name but you see it's saving it under documents virtual machines I don't want to save it there so I'm gonna hit browse and I'm gonna to go to the desktop ITSC 1305 and I already have a folder created called Windows 7 that's where I want to install my virtual machine now if you had a memory stick you could point it at your memory stick but I would create a folder to put it in and for God's sake I would make sure it is a USB 3.0 memory stick, so it runs as fast as possible. Now I'm going to hit next. How big do I want the virtual hard drive to be for this operating system? I'm just going to say 30 gigs and keep it kind of small. I'm going to stick with the default to split the virtual disk into multiple files and hit next. It's going to let me customize all the hardware. And if I hit customize hardware right now, you can see it's going to use two gigabytes of RAM and it's going to use one CPU processor. Now if you've got a high-end machine, if you've got an i7 with four cores, you can tell it to use two processors. If you've got eight gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM, you could use four gigs of RAM or three gigs of RAM to make the machine run peppier. But I'm just going to stick with these defaults right here. And here's a trick I need to do. I'm going to not have it power on this virtual machine after creation because otherwise it's going to run auto install and auto install will answer all the questions of the Windows 7 install and then you don't get to learn anything by going through it step by step. Now I'm going to hit finish and it's got to create that 30 gig virtual disk drive. So I'm going to pause the video while this is being created so you don't have to sit here and watch it go all the way through. Well, my virtual disk drive is created now, and there's my virtual machine. And you see, because I told it not to start the virtual machine after creation, it did not. If I want to start it, I'd say play virtual machine right here. But what I want to do is say edit virtual machine settings. And when I do that, it has added this floppy disk, and it says using the file auto install. That's what makes the auto install happen. Now, floppy disks are so 1990s. So we don't want our virtual machine to have a floppy disk, but we definitely don't want it to do the auto install. So I'm going to click on this floppy disk and say remove. And I can hit OK now. So now I'm ready to play my virtual machine, and it's going to boot up just like a real computer. It'll have a, a virtual machine BIOS, and then it'll boot from DVD, and we can do the Windows install. So here we go. Three, two, one. Now the virtual machine is booting up. Now it's saying, do you want to connect these external devices? I can say, OK, that's fine. And it may give me some other win uh, Windows. In fact, it did. It's going to want me to install VM tools on my host computer. I'm going to say, remind me to do this later. And now you can see it's booting from the Windows DVD. And we got to wait for this to get to the Windows install window so that we can run through the wizard and 
pick our options to install our operating system. So once again, I'm going to liberally pause the video when we're hitting the points where it's called watching the paint dry. In other words, when we're waiting for something to finish. So here's a pause. Now we've got the Windows 7 install screen and I'm going to click Next, Install Now, and then once again Windows Setup is starting and it takes a little while and sometimes you will notice that the virtual machine will capture your mouse and you can't move it out of the virtual machine. To get around that you can press Control and Alt at the same time and it will release your mouse. The other thing that will happen is if you press Control alt delete to send it to the virtual machine, it's going to send it to your host computer. So this button up here on the toolbar will send a Control alt delete to the virtual machine. But anyway, we're back to our install. So I'm going to say I accept these license terms. Next, I'm going to do a custom install. And there is my 30 gigabyte hard drive I want to install Windows to. So I'm going to click on that and say Next. And now the Windows install is going to start. And the first thing it's going to do is copy all the Windows installation files to the virtual hard drive and expand them so that it can actually do the install. And this is going to run from 0% to 100%. Right now we're at the exciting 1%. Watching the paint dry. It's overwhelming overwhelming just so exciting I can hardly talk okay I'll pause the video again we're still just running through the install it's 66 percent expanded of the files we need for the Windows install I'm gonna go back and pause it again I'll check in with you in just a minute so the Windows 7 install is continuing now it has installed the features it has installed the updates and it's completing the installation. You can see my progress bar is racing along. It's got a reboot here. I'm going to save a few seconds in the install and tell the virtual machine to reboot. And this would be just like you're installing Windows to a set of real hardware. Now it's booting for the first time and it's going to finish the installation. Nothing special here. This is just like every other Windows 7 installation I've done dozens and dozens and did I say dozens of times so I'm gonna pause the video again get back to you in just a second when it actually asks us some questions so the Windows 7 install continues with another reboot and then we're almost done So standard Windows 7 messages as we're getting close to the last couple of questions we have to answer to finish the Windows 7 install. Back to the pause button. So here we are. we got to create a username. I always like Bubba. And Bubba-PC is a good name. Next. I'm going to leave the password off this machine. Obviously not a good practice, but for a virtual machine comes in handy. I'm not going to enter my product key right now. I'm going to use recommended settings. I'm going to pick my time zone, which is in the central US. And 4 p.m. looks to be correct to me. I'm going to say I am on a home network. And a lot of times you either want to say work or public. Public just locks your networking down the most. It turns off your file sharing and sharing of printers among other things. Looks like it's going to think about this for a while so almost there. It's finalizing our settings. Time for... are we going to get the desktop? It looks like we are going to get the Windows desktop. Eventually. So as it's finalizing, just remember where I saved that virtual machine. It is on the desktop of my host computer in a folder called ITSE 13 
1505. This is my virtual machine. If I open it up, all these files make up my virtual machine. If I need to move my virtual machine to my memory stick, I need to copy this entire folder. And when I copy it somewhere else and I and I launch it with VM Player, it's going to ask me if I copied or moved my virtual machine, and I want to tell it I moved it. So let's click on my Windows 7 machine, still waiting for my desktop here. So while we wait for the last few minutes, I'm going to hit pause one last time. And here it is. I've got my Windows desktop at a very low resolution, so let's fix that. I'm going to right click and go to screen resolutions and at least jump my virtual machine up from 800 by 600. Let's at least go to 1024 by 768. What you pick will depend on the resolution of your uh, host operating system virtual machine. Now a couple things we always need to do once we've got a virtual machine running is we want to check our device manager and make sure we don't have any missing drivers and there's a base system device that would need to be installed so that needs to be fixed. One of the easy ways to do that is to run Windows Update. We go to Control Panel, System and Security. We want to check for updates and run Windows Update. The last thing you need to make sure is any operating system you're using should have an antivirus. For Windows 7 you can go get Microsoft Security Essentials it's also known as Windows Defender. Windows Defender comes with Windows 8 and Windows 10 automatically, but you have to download it for Windows 7. Now, getting the Windows 7 updates is going to take a long time. There's between 200 and 250 updates, and the first thing Windows Update has to do is update Windows Update. So this is a very tedious process. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch it. But here's my virtual machine. If I launch my computer, click on computer, if I right click on my virtual hard drive, you can see it's 30 gigabytes in space, in size, and right now I'm using 11 gigabytes. So we have installed Windows 7 in a virtual machine. We have admin rights on this machine. If we screw with the settings on this machine and mess them up, it does not affect my host operating system. That's the advantage of using a virtual machine for classes. Now, one other thing. If I come up here to this suspend button, I have the options of shutting down the guest or suspending the guest. If I just say shut down, that's like I suddenly unplugged it without shutting it down properly. What you want to do is go to your start menu and use your shutdown button to shut your windows down like you would normally. If I say suspend, it just freeze derives my operating system exactly how it was at the second I suspended it. And when I resume it, it's going to pick up exactly where I left off. So you don't have to reboot the virtual machine. So if I go back into my VM player now, launch it again. Come on, there it is. click on my virtual machine and tell it to play the virtual machine, it's not going to boot up. It's just going to resume at exactly where it was when I left off. Now, depending on the speed of the hard drive or the memory stick you're using, this suspend and resume could take a few minutes. So, while we wait for this to boot up, I'll pause it one last time. Now you can see my machine resuming where I left off. Progress bar. And there I am, exactly where I was when I froze the machine. So that is creating a Windows 7 computer on VM Player. Take care.